good morning, Facebook. Josh Chapin with you here on an early morning. Um, it's a little noisy, so forgive us for the background noise. We're standing right next to uh, 85 here. Uh, we are in Orange County in the Mebane area, um, a place that uh, is long familiar for uh, investigator Tim Horn, retired now, retired investigator Tim Horn. Tim, tell us what we're doing standing here and why this uh, spot is, is is really important to you and and to the Orange County Sheriff's Office. Uh, the, this billboard is the billboard that the young child was found under in September of 1998. 20 years ago. 20 years ago, a little over 20 years. And so we've been working that as an active murder case uh, from that very day. And we recently were able to solve that case and identify that child. Um, you tell us what, what that process was like. I know it wasn't just, you know, we're talking about a long time here, 20 yeah. years since. So you were able to identify. Tell us what you know about this child and, and how that was able to come to fruition. Ultimately, it was through DNA. It was through ancestry DNA. We knew his genetic uh, background. He was biracial, Caucasian and Asian. And we were able to get a hit on a family tree through ancestry genealogy type DNAs. And through that, we were able to track down family members and pose the circumstances to them, the time, the place uh, that the child was found, and we were able to match that up and identify. Um, tell us what else you're working on in this case. We can walk around here for a second. Yeah. Uh, so you, you were, just to be clear, um, <clears throat> Captain, you retired as the captain, correct? Major. Major. Yeah. Major Horn was out here investigating this scene back in 1998. You were here. You yes. Were called out for the human yeah, remains. Yeah, I was here. What, what do you remember about this scene here? <clears throat> Does it look much the same? Uh, fairly close. Yeah. Uh, mowing crew would come in twice a year and mow this area, so that when they did need to change the advertisement on the billboard, yeah. they would be able to back a truck in here. And that's what they were doing. They were mowing, and as the workmen went around with the bush hog and tractor, they noticed a skull at the edge of the wood line, and that prompted the call to us. Um, and, and you came out here, and, and it was just a skull? What, what, tell me what exactly was found here. We found the entire skeleton. Uh, there was, it was totally de decomposed. There was no tissue left. It was just uh, skeletal remains. We collected those, sent those to the medical examiner's office, and they were able to determine it was a young child. You know we hear any kind of story involving a child, no less this kind of story, how long do we think that these remains were left here uh, when you, you know, yeah. came out to identify them? We, we were pretty confident that the remains had been here approximately two to three months. All the experts were, were consistent with that, and ultimately that was determined to be the case. We know the day the child was left here. It was July the 29th, 1998. Um, you've also been able to piece together, so what is what is this boy's name? And, and he was 10 when he was uh, yeah. dumped here. What do we know about his name? His name, he went by Bobby, Bobby Witt. His first name was actually Robert, Robert Adam Witt. He was born uh, January 7th, 1988. Okay. And anything else we know about this guy? Uh, the child was born in Michigan, and he grew up and spent most of his life in Ohio before briefly moving to North Carolina. Um, and we also know that this isn't, so we've been able to identify this boy who was, uh, whose remains were found here along the side of the road. Anything else we can piece together? I know we can't necessarily talk about an arrest at this point, right. um, but there's some other things that we've been able to identify in connection, at least to this boy's mother, correct? Correct. Through this investigation, we were able to determine there was a high probability that a child's mother was also uh, deceased, and we worked with the National Center with for missing and exploited children in our medical examiner's office. And we checked a number of possibilities and we were able to make a match in Spartanburg County, South Carolina. That's where 20 years ago in 98, uh, the mother was found. Her body was found there. Um, question for you, uh, the ancestor or the, the relative who, yeah. who did this uh, genealogy test, yeah. how were you able to uh, link up with this person in the first place? Ultimately, a very close family member of the child submitted through 23andMe. Uh, they just had their own personal ancestry checked. But from that, we were able to work with Dr. Barbara Ray Venter in California. And she is 
one of the individuals that's responsible for capturing or identifying the Golden State Killer. And I worked with her very closely, uh, email and uh, on phone, and she was able to make the genetic match and give me a starting point with the family and who I needed to contact, and that's, that's where that began. Does this give you a little bit of peace? I mean, I know it, it, it seems crazy, um, but uh, you retired last week. Yes. Like it was last, it was last Friday. Week, last Friday. Friday. And, and this is the case you've been able to bring to a resolution, uh, you know, more or less on the day or two, uh, right around when you retired. What, what sort yeah. of peace does that give you as you leave the Orange County Sheriff's Office? You know, I was always confident that this would ultimately be solved and I assumed it would be through DNA. I feel very fortunate to have still been here and be part of that. Uh, it's a team effort. It was clearly hundreds of individuals. Our entire uh, sheriff's office, the investigative division, the medical examiner, just countless individuals that, that worked on this case. So for not just myself, but for them, I was, I was uh, happy to bring closure and put this to conclusion. The family, you have been able to talk to them. Obviously they know yeah. That their, that, that their son has, in a sense, been brought home. Right. Least, uh, ultimately, ultimately will. Ultimately, yeah. yeah. What, 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 is the, uh, what has your communication been, been like with them? And, and, and when you told them they ha you had this sort of news, how did they react to this? Uh, honestly, they weren't uh, totally surprised. After all these years not seeing Bobby, they assumed something had happened to the child and they were becoming suspicious of the stories that they had been told, the lies that they had been told, where he was supposedly at. And so it wasn't a total shock uh, when I initially contacted them. Um, in terms of the, the, this moving forward, the prosecution moving forward, yeah. any, any, anything uh, that you can shed light on that as this case sort of now takes its way through the judicial system? Yeah, well currently, of course, you know, you have one of these homicides in North Carolina. You also have the mother in South Carolina. Right. There's a number of jurisdictional issues that have to be addressed and worked out. Uh, the suspect is in long-term incarceration in a federal penitentiary. He cannot go anywhere. And so, though we want to do this in a, in a quick fashion, it's, it's something that we have a moment to be able to debate and discuss between all the, the people involved. Right, and there's, to be clear, there's no one that's out there no. who's a serial killer. There's no one out there on the loose right no. now. No, That's, you know, no. your kid, you should be worried about your kid or anything Our, like our yeah. suspect has been incarcerated since late 1998. Okay, um, a, a word maybe to, to close about what this says about your department, what it says about all law enforcement with cases that people think are dead, that, that uh, they're just going to forget about it? Well, the way things work in our agency, we collect all the evidence that we're able to at crime scenes. And we review those cases every so often to see what new technology has come uh, up, what new testing is available, so that we can apply that to older cases and get some resolution. Because, you know, 20 years ago when this occurred, DNA was relatively new in law enforcement. It had only been out for a few years, and we had a number of tests uh, in this particular case that w we waited two and three years to get results. Now you can get results in a week to 30 days. Gotcha. So it's, it's assisted a lot. And do you think that these cases will exist less going forward, these, these cases that go unsolved for years and years and years? Um, because of the uh, proliferation uh, of DNA, would you say? Absolutely. Yeah. It's only going to get better. I've, I've gone from my career in 1990 when I started, there was no DNA available, to now you can get a DNA profile with basically 41 skin cells. And so that's a light year jump in technology. And so it's only going to get better. Any, I keep saying last word, but any, you, you, is there one word when you look at this crime scene? Um, <clears throat> that, that comes to your mind? It's, it's just very sad. You know, anytime you have a death, it's, it's tragic and, and you think about that, but certainly when you have a young child, it, it strikes home a little more. Okay. Major Tim Horn, uh, just retired from the Orange County Sheriff's Office. Um, we're here just to sum up along the side of the road on I-85 in Mebane. 
uh, where we now, after 20 years, have been able to identify uh, human remains that were found here, that of a 10-year-old boy, Bobby Witt. Um, he was killed, his remains dumped here. Uh, investigator Major Horn worked on this scene. We've been able to identify him um, and charges are pending. Uh, a suspect that they, they believe is, is in custody already on an unrelated charge, but more is gonna come out, it's fair to say, yeah. in this case. We'll continue to keep you posted this afternoon online and on air uh, at ABC 11. Thank you, Major, for your work and, and okay. for talking to us this morning. Absolutely. Thank you, Yeah, yeah, just hang on to that for two seconds okay. just so we can... Um, I don't know how bad that was. No, it was perfect. Okay, it good. Oh, exactly uh, yeah, I'll show you. Yeah. So, um... This is pretty much the area that the child was found. And it was, what did you find here? Did you find it? Was it like a like a in a blanket or anything like that? The skull was at the very edge of the wood line. Had it been just a few feet further back, you wouldn't have even seen it. Really? Yeah, and the sun had bleached it a little bit, and so that's what caught the attention of the the maintenance crew. But when we got here, it appeared to us that someone had carried the child, just like you would carry a sleeping child, and laid them down. Their leg, his child's legs were still draped over some uh, brush and it was partially clothed. Do we know his cause of death? Was it, do you know how he was killed? Ultimately, we determined how he was killed. It was listed initially as undetermined, but possible strangulation, asphyxiation. And that's what the Ultimately, yes. Was proved? Yes. Um, You know, it just doesn't make sense. I know you do this for a living, but but to see a kid there, I, I'm not saying that an adult would be any better, but to see this body here of a 10-year-old yeah. that is clearly, this kid had, seemed like it had no chance. I mean, no, even, you're even, right, you're even right. with a 10-year-old maybe being able to fight back a little bit, it's just, it's, it's horrible. Yeah, it was a tragedy, and you, you sit here and you look back at the interstate, thousands upon thousands of cars drive by every day, and you think, you know, which one may have uh, observed a car or a truck or something backed in here or saw something. And, and you know, we tried to reach out to, to get the word out, but with three months delay from the time the body was left to when it was recovered, it was just impossible. Three months, so you, you, you recovered it, or it was left here? It was left here July the 29th, 1998, July. and it was discovered September 25th, 1998. So, so that, that three months really couple, three months. kind of yeah. push you guys behind the eight ball. Absolutely. And then, you know, the child was initially listed as a male based solely on the clothing. Right. And it took quite a while to determine that it was actually a male child. So early on, we had to explore the possibility, yes, it could be a male child. It could be a female child that had male clothing, socks and shoes on. And so that doubles your workload as you're trying to work with uh, Nick Mick and, and other entities to determine, you know, possible matches.